into champion select, ladies and gentlemen. Alistair and Rexai already banned away on the side of Absolute and Sin, removing Corky and, of course, Maokai. So the first Corky ban we've seen already. So first mate, not going to get his comfort pick. Yeah, first ban, but very much targeted. It is his comfort pick, as you just said. He's performed so very well on that. He's performed with the ridiculous KDA, the oh, highest yeah. individual game in terms of KDA. He is number one. And Maokai, another target ban against Jack Attack. We've seen it twice in a row now tonight. Getting that out of the tables, he's not going to have that option. Yeah, Robo Center a bit focused with that one as well over the side of Sudden Fear, but it's really catching on as far as that band for that super tank there in the top lane. Callista, band away on the blue side here. So Sin, not going to grab that one as Cardred's actually stepped onto the lineup here. So they've got Cardred, no Stealthix this time around. We'll see whether that's going to turn the tides. And haven't seen the Caitlyn get banned away just yet, and Jack Attack is going to pick away that Azir very, very quickly. Yeah, so they first pick a zero away from Rymeister and on to mid beast. It's a very strong mid lane pick, but it does raise question marks as to Ezreal still being available. Oh my goodness, I forgot. And they first picked the Azir. We watched Legacy pick it into Azir comfortably and have a successful game. So the possibility is always going to be there. Do they want that? The bands are very targeted, so there's still a lot of strong meta picks available. The Gragas with the Rek side down is also another good go-to jungle champion. Fizz still there. We saw Rosie have a very strong game on that uh, just before. So a lot, of the, a lot of options there. A lot of options, but it is going to be Kadra going with the Siva. Second time he's on that champion. Hasn't found success with it just yet, of course. Did look okay when he moved to the um, to the Caitlyn, of course, in his first couple of weeks, but not necessarily finding as much success on the short-range carries, and it is going to be Gragas locked in for Juve. So I think people haven't quite found Ezreal's face in the, the pick order yet, so it's a bit interesting, but... Malik, understandably, is going to be hovering over the Nunu here to try and give that blood boil over to both the AD carry and the Azir. We'll see whether they go for anything else, anything tricky. Maybe the Jinx with it. Keeping in mind, Nunu-Azir is a very strong combo. They do often like to have the second option of maybe the Jinx or the Caitlyn to go with that, just to give them so many different possibilities of who to blood boil. It works really well in synergy with them all. Mid-Beast, if that is locked in for the top lane, that affects that with a two hyper carry comp, essentially. Yeah, it's true, and it is going to be the Shen locked in. So Shen and Nunu taken away here for Absolute. They are going to be able to pick up those ones. But look, I'm just baffled by the lack of Ezreal. <laughs> you just really want Ezreal to be there. We don't it's not know. that I want it. It's just that I don't understand why people aren't picking it. Yeah, well, we don't know what Rhymeist is going to go just yet. It is the assumption the Azir is in the mid lane, but you need to make sure the Ezreal does work with the team comp. An overwhelming strength doesn't necessarily suit other things. That's a good point. The Siva, the Gragas, a very big go button, so maybe the Ezreal not their plan to actually put that together with this big engage button when Ezreal more suited towards the poke-oriented style. And they still want to know what Absolute are running because there's a lot of champions that can directly counter the Ezreal. That's a good point. And what would you opt to go for if you were up against one of these Ezreals here, Rusty? What would you suggest one of these lineups would pick up in response? Well, it's almost a little bit too late, given that the Siva has been picked in terms of AD carry rolls, and all they're really missing is a support now from the side of Absolute besides that AD carry. So perhaps the Janna for a little bit of shield disengage kind of negate the damage that can be put out, or another raw tank maybe to complement the rest of the side that Absolute have is just standing in the front line. Actually, you know what? I'd say Braum. They've done some weird support so far. Braum is a very strong meta support. Yeah. Completely ruins Ezreal's day and makes his life miserable. Does the same thing with Siva's boomerang. Yeah, Unbreakable, a pretty decent tool here. And of course, a very tanky man. So up with the Nunu and the Shen as well. They're going to have a huge front line in order to get through. We'll see whether they decide to go for it. First mate is considering the Lucian here. A lot of aggressive options on that champion. We'll see whether it's good enough here against Kadrid. But look, we'll see how it goes. I wouldn't suggest Chundal here either. There's not a lot of tanky members to actually take stats from. So maybe look away from that one for this <laughs> game. We do know Strawbella loves the passive style of support, the Lulus, the Janas of the world. Maybe make that work with the Lucian, provide a bit of extra shield and support against the Ezreal Siva poke. In saying that, entirely up to them. We don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, it looks like Strawbella is actually considering the Janna here. So going back to a more disengaged roots here with that pickup is going to be locked away. So Lucian Janna going to be the bottom lane. And I actually quite like that. Of course, a lot of burst damage potential out of the Lucian. Able to get that double tap with the Light Slinger. So you'll get an extra damage out of that um, either Storm Shield. So we'll see whether that works. But Sin, now considering their final pick, Rosie able to mix it up most definitely with this option. We'll see what he goes with. Of course, his Rumble still there. Yeah, so there's a lot of options still available in this top lane. They've got a fair amount of damage already between the rest of the side. All they're really missing is a secondary tank 
to be in the front line with Gregus. Maybe some reliable hard initiation, essentially, what is missing. So Malphite actually fits that quite well. In terms of other top laners, maybe the Hecarim to go with that. The Fizz, to a degree, very good at throwing down. Or just the Gnar, which does the same thing. Yeah, going for the Gnar, I actually quite like that with the On the Hunt there available from Siva. So you can speed up the Gnar, really get him into position and smack people around. Make sure that you can get that Gnar ultimate into whichever wall that you like. But I'm just looking at Rymeister here. I mean, this Ezreal has been going off just recently. We saw it just before. And we'll see whether it's going to continue to dominate. Yeah, Ezreal always going to have a big impact. The question mark on Ezreal is always going to be that early game before you actually have a rune glaive as to how you can impact anywhere at all. You look at laning phases, Zero is going to have a field day until that rune glaive is out. Yeah. So in saying that, it's quite a comfortable mid lane, but you look past the mid lane for the side of Sin, how they can affect the mid game pretty much anywhere else on the map. Yeah, and this Lucian's actually going to be quite accelerated as well, considering the fact that he has access to the Blood Boil as well as the Eye of the Storm for the extra damage, extra attack speed from those two abilities. And now with the Azir there as well, they've got a lot of sort of late game power potentially if they manage to get things rolling. But what I'm worried about is how they're going to keep this Ezreal down in the early stages of this game. So it's going to be very difficult for them to do so. The jungle will be okay at ganking, but it's a Nunu, so it's near impossible to actually find a kill directly onto the Ezreal. It's going to be difficult to try and keep him down. It's almost essentially entirely on mid-beast to ensure that he yeah. controls the lane, to ensure that he keeps Ezreal down at least somewhat in farm and try and make himself ahead to impact around the same time. It's going to come down to teamfight execution, though, from this lineup of Absolute. Yeah, we'll see that whether they can get it working. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Make sure that you're letting us know who you think is going to win this tiebreaker. Use the hashtag ABSWIN if you think that Absolute are going to take it, or the hashtag SINWIN if you think that Sin Gaming are going to be able to take down this lineup. And of course, you know, due to the power rankings, I mean, it looks like Absolute on paper should be able to take this one, but Sin really looking like a dominant team, and their team comp is really, really scary. Also, two of the coolest hashtags possible out of all of the teams. Oh, yeah. ABS and Sin. But, yeah, Breaks right. and rhymes, man. Yeah, the team comps, though, they do look phenomenal. The damage that's going to be coming from both of them is essentially through the roof. We mentioned that ABS, oh, Absolute, were running a two-threat comp. I did just call them ABS. You did. Where they have the Lucian and the Azir, but that is being bolstered is being benefited by having the Janna and having the blood boil from the Nunu. So their two threats are very strong. It's almost 2.5 from just the spells they're being given to protect them and just to help them. You have a look at the side of Sin though. It is essentially three threats. Bard to a degree can be considered a threat. He just does a ridiculous amount of work. Positive or negative, he does a lot of work. And then Gragas who can disengage a fight, reset the fight, or not just completely change it with his explosive cask. They've got three threats, but it's a pseudo five comp. Yeah, well, we'll see whether they can make it work. Of course, on the other side of Strawbella there with the Janna in her hands is going to have a lot of disengage potential as well. Of course, Monsoon and Explosive Cast working very similarly. So we'll see whether which team wants to get these fights going with these abilities or which one wants to be disengaging for the majority of the time. We need to address the fact that there is Jack Attack there in the top lane, a very sort of high-regarded tank player in that lane on the Shen. Does have access to that Stand United so can get on top of First Mate. Give him that gigantic shield. Eye of the Storm's going to be there. We could have a massive Lucian in the late game here. And, of course, if you're going to put it on anyone, making sure First Mate survives, that's going to be getting some damage down. It certainly is. And then you look at the rest of the team, even the way that it works around that Lucian. Nunu, in terms of zone control with that absolute yeah. zero, gives a safe zone almost for the Lucian to stand. And Janna with the Monsoon and then the Emperor's Divide from Azir. What they're running right now on this absolute lineup is just, it's not disengage or direct engage. It's more so stand neutral and outplay. Yeah, and outplay and move people around yeah. as well. Lots of displacement available, but we are going to throw it over to the casters. Pastry time and spawn to get us into the game. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Atlas and Rusty. I am here with Spawners to get our last game of the season, actually. I mean, semi-finals are coming up. We've got playoffs coming up, of course. Saw that coming up in late July. But our last game of the regular season for Split 2. Yeah, we're going to see how it works out. This is for fifth place, you know, an absolute and Sin Gaming both losing tonight. Pressure is on one of these teams, and I like what they were hitting on about Absolute's team comp. I like the augmentation they have with Jana, with the Nunu really getting first mate going. He's shown that he is their primary carry since stepping on the Rift. But I just want to point out one thing. Nar Ultimate into Ezri Ultimate into Siva Boomerang probably means a whole of the Absolute lineup dies. That sounds great. Yeah, it sounds really good. And this is something that was made popular. You know, the first time we saw Nar with the Narvan combo, teams were actually running it with 
Ezreal in the 80 carry position. And that ultimate doesn't do half the damage that AP Ezreal yep. ultimate does. So there are some very real team fight victories that Sin can take out of this. And I like that they've gone with a team fight execution uh, comp because, you know, they went with this split push, try and get picks, and it didn't work last game. So, you know, instead of trying to execute something again and go through all the frustration, just throw it out the window, go completely different, play to your strengths, which is the fact that your mid laner is a beast, and try and get work done. Yeah, and Rymeister, been a strong mid laner all season long, really been the big carry on Sin, but the whole team on both sides going to have to step up here because it is crunch time. There is only one safety spot and Absolute and Sin are onto the rift to fight for it. Yeah, exactly right. We'll see who is able to come out ahead. Comfort picks, you have to say, across the board right now for Absolute. And Sin, as we said, gone back for that team fight. You know, they've got all the ways to start it up. They've got the NAR ultimate. They've got the uh, ultimate that can come through from Bard as well. Just to, you know, get everyone in nice position. Sounds great. <laughs> I'm ready. smack them. Yeah. I mean, we've seen uh, some Rek'Sai Bard, I feel like. It's one of the few... I'm going to put this in air quotes. True uh, Bard <laughs> ultimate combos that we've seen. But Bard's just a great champion. You see why a player like Flying Jew prioritizes it. I feel like, for me, if you're a good Thresh player, you're going to be a good Bard player. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of Bard is that you have to not be able to look at your lane. You have to be able to look at, like, the, everything surrounding you right now. And, you know, Ju's one of those players that's definitely proven he can do it. And Trash Boat, we're going to have to see whether he can connect, collect enough charms, get enough meeps, and help carry this and game. Yep, be the third carry that Sin need here. Don't worry, Ezreal going to do more than enough damage if he gets the items. And a big group there from ABS just kind of sitting in their red buff defending it. But Sin not interested in an evade. Both teams, understandably, it is a best of one. They are playing carefully in the tiebreaker. Yeah, exactly right. Best of one. Randomized sides going to come into this one. See who is able to get the victory. Standard lanes. Probably couldn't have more on the line right now, obviously, honestly, and we'll see who's able to come out ahead. Yeah, big match for both these teams. They both qualified through the promotion relegation tournament for this split, and uh, neither of them really want to do that again. Yeah, exactly right. You don't want to have to go up against one of these challenger teams, especially with some of the quality that's running around in there. You know, you've got previous OPL teams, you've got Legacy Genesis running around in there as well, so... As we said, pressure on. Oh, oh, great double bite from Trash Boat. Find Strawbella now with a ricochet. That was wonderfully set up by Sin. It certainly was. Trash Boat landing the clutch double bite. All of a sudden, they're under turret. First mate has no health and Sin in a position of power. And you know what? We don't talk about the Bard all-ins very often, but there is potential if that happens again for a quick boomerang blade and that to be it. Yeah, exactly right. You know, he's just got such good CC when... People stand close to each other or in minion waves, you know. The harass definitely isn't something to scoff at. Yep. See if he can make it work. Bard definitely a support for creative support players that like to bend bindings into silly places. I think my favorite one was seeing someone get bound to a Malzahar void. <laughs> it was Malzahar, actually. I have to trade him. It was great. As mid beast in the mid lane there, as expected. Is here into Ezreal. We've seen this matchup once already tonight, but first mate needs a binding. Boomerang oh. Blade as well. Doesn't quite land the full bounce, though. Yeah, and it went through a lot of creeps there, of course, doing reduced damage as it goes through. And you look at how much... The thing that surprises me about Bard, right? I can understand his Q. Like, it's got a short cooldown, really easy to execute on as the game gets later. Magical Journey's fantastic. Very straightforward, but intricate spell to use. Yep. Like, Flowers, they're fantastic. Like, I love them. His auto attack is ridiculous. It does so much damage. It does so much damage as the game goes on. Like, you collect those little critters, he just destroys you. Oh, Drew's down here as well. A little too soon, though. Don't quite get the kill they wanted. Instead, they'll just force them back on the turret. Oh, and look at that. Right underneath the turret. You know you want it. We can troll. You can tell he wants it as well. Yeah, he does. But he, knows oh. he just gets a binding instead. Good shield there from Strawbiller. First mate actually fancies a tray, but the Meeps getting in there with the Spell Thief's head as Juice visits mid lane next. He's on a full tour of the Rift. Yeah, he's just, you know, bumping into old friends saying hello. Wants to make sure that his presence is felt, at least. It certainly is there. As Ryan Meister farming things up. Like we said, saw this earlier tonight. Ryan Meister just wants things to go as smoothly as possible before those items come through. Yeah, exactly right coming in there. Rosie actually probably has the hardest ri lane on the rift right now. Nah, you know, doesn't do great against anyone that can prioritize Dorian Shield and has sustain. Because he's more about chipping you out of lane than the big all-ins. And Shen, you can see right now, doing a great job of being able to punish him for being that kind of... Timo-esque range carry. Yeah, looking good there for Jack early on in the lane. 
We'll see how it develops. There's a nice spell shield from Cardin in the bottom lane. Gets him some mana back because they're continuing to push down. No real big CS lead though in Trash Boat. That Chime's still there. Yeah, just hanging out just embedded can't in the grass. get in to position to be able to grab that one. Too dangerous. It's at the tip of his fingers. <laughs> Juves. Going to get the Scuttle Crab. Malik, level 3 to Juves' is level 4. So the early jungle lead there. Going over to Greg. So Malik's looking for something. Just some deep vision down into the jungle. Yeah, a really good pink war, but he's being caught out now. Yeah, Juves going to see him. Those have two levels in the barrel. Body slams in. Good damage from the W. Throws in the Q for quick over. damage. Yeah, Rymeister. He's the real damage dealer here. Is the Grump up Body doing slam back up. Oh, Ooh. just missed. That was a flash out of Rymeister. He really wanted that kill coming in there. Not able to pick it up. So, you know, maybe a gank can come through. Ezreal, of course, has Arcane Shift, and he doesn't really use it in lane. So, not going to be completely caught out, but Sin trying to get any kind of early advantage. Yeah, you can see the bloodthirst there in Rymeister's eyes. Certainly a player, like, like we heard Rosie say earlier this evening, an emotional side, Rymeister. Young mid player, very, very good. And coming from solo queue, but certainly has, you know, a lot of experience to gain, and that's kind of what the other members of the team bring. Yeah, exactly right. You know, especially with Kadrid on the lineup, you can see exactly what they've gone for here. Like, all credit to uh, Stealthix, good up-and-coming AD carry, but you just cannot teach experience in that short amount of time. And Kadrid, Crash Boy, that is a very experienced duo. Yeah. You know what? It's a clutch game for the clutch players, and that is not that's not a disservice to Stealthix or his play. So we'll see what Sin can do here. Carter doing well so far against Persmade, who honestly has been really good in the OPL in the short time he's been here. He was even not bullying around radio, but he was giving him a go. Good go there in the lane. Yeah, it certainly was trying to get in there and really mix it up as you see some aggression coming through from first mate. He's just trading back and forth, trying to put putting down the caretaker's shrines, making sure there's a bit of health. And I'll go off a chance for a bit more regen. This is the I would say underrated thing about Bard. Surprisingly good regen in the lane if you pop in and out. Oh yeah, he's got great sustain coming through there and you know, he's going to be able to keep himself topped up as well. As Juice finds that sneaky pink ward. And I like that we mentioned first, mate, when we were talking about experienced players. This is another person that has so much invaluable pro experience in the o uh, Oceanic scene. Played on Team MV with people like Heavens coming through there. Of course, also played with Hamilton Mattress for a long time. Yep, who is on the absolute the lineup sometimes. The absolute lineup. So, you know, there definitely is some uh, synergy and some good depth to the absolute lineup yeah. as well. Jack Attack as well. Definitely a veteran player. He's like old as time. <laughs> as old as trash, but this card clears out the waves in the bottom side. Rymeister trims the CS. Stealing creeps from his bottom lane. <laughs> That was interesting. I think he was looking to set something up. Dude. Yeah, I think he was looking to chunk first mate out a little bit further and hopefully facilitate an all-in. Oh, Malik's wow. here. Trash Boat's forced to flash. But Juice is here as well. Now Carter going to turn it around, but no ultimates. Man, it's a bit of an awkward 3v3. Yeah, so double summoner spells burnt there for nothing and a really good gank setup coming through from Malik. Trash Boat wasn't really in a position to be able to follow that up and we'll have to see whether they can get some work done. Juve sweeping it out there as well. Two points actually in the battle roll on the Drunken Rage of Peace, so a bit more early damage there, kind of evening those early skill points out. Yeah, trying to get some skirmishes going, it looks like right now. Good. But uh, probably needs to just recall right now. He's in very low kill range, and with the uh, Eye of the Storm on, that's a lot of damage that's going to come out of uh, the Lucian player. No heal here for Kadra either, so can't even help Trash Boat, just the Tempered Fate will be all they can really contribute to any sort of disengage, and Sin, Playing patiently, I think both these teams honestly are playing it quite slow. Eight and a half minutes in, no first blood just yet. And that makes perfect sense to me. This is, again, a high-pressure game for both teams. Yeah, exactly right. They need to make sure that it comes down to the execution part of the game. Rosie started to execute a little bit better in his lane, caught right back up in CS, and starting to bully Trash Boat out, uh, Jack Attack out a little bit. Trash Boat's on Rosie's team. That would be all good if he was bullying his own player out of lane. Imagine right. that. Right, most of those getting blue buff. <laughs> Gonna clear things out in the mid lane. Has his sheen ready as well, so getting that first essential piece to the rune glaive. Yeah, and this is the thing about uh, AP Ezreal. Really. He's just able to do so much throughout every stage of his item build. Sheen's always been huge on Ezreal, but because you used to max the W, because it was your only real trading component in lane, you couldn't shove out the lanes. Now, because you go into rune glaive, you're able to Max your shoving ability as well as utilize Shane, Sheen with just the Q. So, oh wow, Probella. Yeah, caught Trashboat here. Oh no, bound to the wall, never mind. 
Good out of position. Cardrid coming in as well. Doesn't pop the ulti. Boomerang Blade's good. Does get some trade down. Yeah, that's a lot of damage actually right now in Straw Valor. And because the wave is where it is, I actually disagree really heavily with Cardrid popping that ricochet there. They could have held the wave for a long time and punished Siva, uh, Jana for an overextension. Instead, they push it in. Blue buff does go over to a Z. though as Malik assists his mid laner with that particular expedition. Rymaster creeping ahead on CS, gets ahead now to 100, about 15 up as Midbeast will clear these up, make that difference a bit closer to 10. Yeah, so Midbeast still doing an okay job. You kind of get a free farming laze against Ezreal at least early on, up until he grabs that Rune Glaive, which he's now got, because he just doesn't really have much kill pressure because he has no ignite. He takes a smite instead. So, you know, Midbeast doing the right thing here, just continuing to farm, going a very scaling route because he should be on track for 10 CS a minute in a very passive lane. Ezreal is going to get there as well, but if you pick someone scaling like an Azir, as Midbeast has done, he should still be able to have good impact. And there's the Rune Glaive for Rymeister. Going to get the AoE down, and this sort where the power really starts. This Trash Boat going to get cold, actually. Cardrid going to absorb some of it. Pops his own ultimate. A little premature there from Cardrid. Yeah, I think he was trying to go aggressive onto Straw Bella, but in the end, not able to get the work done that he wanted to. You can see they've got a oh, fair... Oh, that's mate. a lot of damage. It's the Ezreal ultimate that is good damage, but not quite enough to finish it off, especially with all summoners up in the bottom lane, and Malik here as well. Yeah, and then Oom card right yep. now, so needs to be fairly careful coming through here. Takes a good piercing light, actually, and now lane is completely reversed. They're sending Juice down. Yeah. Juice was here for a while, I think, Juice expecting Malik to has been in the game. bottom lane a lot. He's, it's a new home. He's abandoned mid lane. Meister is like, what about me? I feel like ganking a mid as yours lane. Doesn't matter, Maybe man. not the most This is sick. Still. Maybe it's an, I don't know. You know what? A tactic. A fifth game tactic. A bold move for a clutch game here as Cardred will be forced actually off this wave. Trash Boat kind of hanging out. We'll trim the wave as best he can. Drews might come down to help tend to the gardening duty, but Cardred's forced back here. We'll go back and get another item here, but already got the BF sword. Can't get much more after this. And Gets a pick -ass. Never mind. That's actually quite a big buff. Yeah, so able to get back, get the double uh, AD items coming through here. They also hold the... Uh, that's... All right, creep. cool. So I'm going to explain why this is... When you leave only caster creeps up, the lane stacks on your side, and because they don't do that much damage to the melee, it actually pushes against you. So in that case, they should have let the whole wave crash up against the turret and just taken the fact. Unless right now, uh, absolute uh, fast push this in, there was a really legitimate chance that they could freeze that wave. Yeah, oh, Trash Potent's taking a go to the ulti, but just hits a caster creep right on the back. First ulti missed there, first mate dodges out of the way. And Absolute still fighting here, looking strong in the bottom lane. Yeah, short arm the ultimate. Generally with Bard ult, uh, you're the Bard player, so correct me if I'm wrong. You want to go a little bit deeper so they yep. at least have to walk back towards your carry to dodge it out. But Trash Boat short arms that one and make sure that they can just dash backwards and get away. It's a fine art for the Bard ult missile speed. But yeah, you usually want to... You've got to mind game him, you've got to trick him. This first man actually eats a slow card. We're going to come in. Malik, though, he's got the dragon, and that's going to prompt in to leave. Magical journey. There is no follow. But Kadra, once again, so low in this lane. He just went back to shop. And what was a lane that was very much in Sin's favor is now definitely going over. Oh. Here comes the Rhymeister ulti. Going to just try and trim some waves. Does trim them back, but not quite enough. Kadra staying in the bottom lane. Does have a single potion. Yeah, so all that was was to stop the freeze. So right now, freeze has been broken. Kadra can walk back up. CS, first mate can no longer hold the wave there. So little things, and this is what I was talking about with Ezreal. He might, Oh, wow. dive in the top side. Jack attack is going to get first blooded. Rosie, with a bit of help from Juves, gets the kill. Yeah, able to pick that one up. We'll be able to successfully get back. Down the bottom side, though. Malik popped his ulti. Trash boat, forced to flash again. Good bind there once Malik keeps him away. But Kadra's defensively going to pop his ultimate now. And it's just that one kill. It, was, it took a while, but first blood just under 14 minutes. And you can see it was first blood and one assist, but a thousand gold is currently the lead for Sin. They're winning out in CS in. Ooh, Trash Boat, you are being brave. He is very brave. No ultimate does have his ignite, but no flash now either. Cardred apparently sticking for a whole host of farm. And Rhymeister now going to pop his ultimate down again. Will it land? That might be enough to go oh. in. Oh my god! That did an absurd amount of damage the, to first mate. The snipe from downtown as Rymeister had turned level 11. That's why I did so much extra damage. And now Straw Bella. Yeah, going to get trapped against the wall. Forces the flash, does Trash. But I really like the respect that Janna showed there. And now Sin, they get the kill. They get a turret in the bottom side. Rymeister gets blue buff. 
things opening up now in this game. Yeah, exactly right. You could tell they wanted to open up the map, really get Rosie in a place where he can split push. He's gone. That Black Cleaver build wanted to get Rhymeister where he could fire ults into the sidelines like he continues to do. And this is only good news for Sin. Their carries are the ones getting going. I was going to say, if this is going to be a farm heavy game, I'd probably want to be the team with the APS who are on it. As Malik barely gets stunned, but he will get slow. Trash Boat they thought about an ulti, but didn't pull the trigger. No dragon Juice. up yet, they'll just back away. Yeah, Juice took a little bit of a wander through the jungle for a deep ward, nearly was caught out. And this is the thing that I really like about uh, mid Ezreal, is able to do the Raptor camp fairly healthy, especially if you have the uh, ranges up. My Meister didn't, so he takes a little bit of damage, but generally you're able to get that one done. Oh, looking again here for the top lane, Jack attack! Not gonna get hit, just loses the Caster crew. But Rosie honestly doesn't even need it, he's gonna build up range, he's nearly his ult's still a fair way off cooldown, but he's doing well. But ulti miss there again. Trash Boat, gonna recalibrate that throwing arm for that one. You need you miss 100% of Bard ult True. you don't take. We've learned yeah. this from Bard players. Yeah. So, oh, Rift scuttle control. See ya. I mean, that's two smites. Prime has the complete control of this land as mid beast. He will get the uh, blue buff donated over, but Rosie takes the tower in top lane. It was a very quiet early game, but Sin launched out to three and a half thousand gold ahead already. And we keep talking about Sin, like the, their weakness is that they're a young team. So you try and make them make difficult shot calling decisions and that's where you pull them around the map. If there's anything Sin is, it's a really solid mechanical team. Yep. They've got Rosie, they've got Rhymeister, Cardred, fairly decent mechanical player. Is oh, first mate's seen this again. Oh. Oh, that, that. Third of his health, casually, as first mate's forced out of the lane. Yeah, so what you don't want to do is stay in extended laning phases against people that are really good at laning, because you can see they're coming out ahead time and time again. Every lane, only a slight oh, advantage. Oh, Midbeast is dead. Ulties him out. That's actually enough. Nice survival, as Midbeast will keep safe. But Trash Boat finds the stun, but there's no follow-up. Yeah, and Rhymeister. Oh, Trash Boat has gone on quite a journey. Cardred pops his ulti. Who wants first man? It's just going to go straight in. He's got his Infinity Edge. Oh. Doesn't get a crit, though. Trash Boat nearly walked... Uh, first mate nearly walked into the same brush as where mid piece was landing, and a boomerang probably would have killed him. So you could see the big call of do not ulti? come in, my brush came out. No ulti there from Rhymeister. Already used it in the mid lane battle. Oh. Sad times. But last turret of the game looks to maybe go down. Last outer, sorry. Yep. Jack defending though. Malik here with a straw bellow. Means that the tower should be safe. Good wave in the bottom side pushing. You can see Sin oh, pinging that. Rosie, Rosie working well. on the top. He's going black cleaver into frozen mallet. So double offensive item right now. Looking for a HP tank only. Not really much respect for the resistances coming out. We talked about um like landing builds and like landing phase players. This is a great landing build for Rosie, especially in this matchup. Yeah, exactly right. He's going to continue to bully the Shen with it. Trobella heading down for some support, but right now, if they isolate Rosie, he's going to continue to take it to yeah, Jack. Rhymeister has Lude and Zeko up now as well, so things looking good as Rhymeister does spot a ward. Goes into the right brush with the Arcane Shift. Obviously, A moving, so able mid's, to get that as well. Mid smite so cute for so many different reasons. That was one of them. Yeah, exactly right. You know, you're able to pick up the buffs that come through. And you can see Rhymeister, he's content to continue to farm. He understands that the later this game goes, the better off he is. I mean, Rhyme, all the lanes have really been farming up here. And you're right, Sin are the team that are reaping the benefits. But Rhymeister is just ultiing the side lanes. Like, he can still have presence despite being firmly affixed to the mid lane. 210 CS in 18 and a half minutes. And this is what really separates, not AP Ezreal's, but Ezreal players in general. Good AP, uh, good Ezreal players to great Ezreal players. If you're able to affect a side lane team fight, a wave push that's coming through there, and Rhymeister has shown that he can do both, wow. Yeah, Jack Attack might actually die here. Rosie going in, will get it. Now hops over Malik as he channels absolute zero. Azir is coming up as well. Rosie's still alive. Has his flash, but no Megana. Will flash away. Might get another kill. Oh, oh the ulti so close to taking out Malik. Rosie's still running. Eats the tower hit, and he will die. Yeah, so in the end, he goes down. Trades one for one, but gets a lot of pressure mid lane. That's going to fall. The damage. The damage is fairly strong in this Ezreal. As Sin will rotate in to take the dragon. They've got the mid turret as well. So 3-0 up in turrets. 3-1 up in kills. Now going to equalize the Dragons, and all of a sudden, Sin, a 4,000 plus gold ahead. Yeah, and you know, you can see that Absolute, they don't really have an answer for it. Like, holding waves is what they seem to be going for. 
as Trash Boat makes some waves, Golden. Everyone else is like, we're not here, guys. Pretend like you didn't see anything, and they're like, you've given away nothing. Wilson's actually staying. He's going to pay for this as Cardred comes in. Good flash, though, as he gets out, but not from the ultimate. Sand United might not be in time. Cardred does finish the kill. So a big mistake coming through for him first mate there you have to think with bard ultimate sailing over your head that there might be some follow-up engagement coming didn't really respect that and in the end they make him pay oh ulti down to straw bella poking from the blue buff as malik smites away the wave to clear out the creeps sin will return for the push no they'll back away instead but this lane effect has gone on so long, Sin are only getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, exactly right. You can see another recall probably going to come through right now out of Rymeister after he takes these Raptor camps. Trashboat nearly gets double Ward. Does get it with a pink. Puts the pink down, Ward's over. Thinks about the red still. Good Alex's luck. Like, yeah, I don't really want to be here. Malik's like, I've got consumed, buddy. Trashboat's going to try it. Yep. Goes in, doesn't get it. Doesn't even get the bind because the little Cinderling dies as well. But Rymas is level 14, he's got blue buff, he's got Ludens, he's got Runeglaive, and Rosie's almost at two offensive items at 20 minutes. Yeah, and Rosie, you know, when that Frozen Mallet comes through, Jack Attack's day gets even worse. I mean, he's already down 20-odd CS as well as that kill. He's down 30 CS, beg your pardon. And it, as I said, as soon as that Frozen Mallet comes through, Shen is just a sitting duck. Yeah, and Rymas does. And the rest of Sin now collapsing onto the mid lane again, but not over committing. They know that they only get stronger. Oh my god. It does so much damage. And you see, he's just backing away into Fog of War, making sure that his team is always the one in position to respond to it. Takes a lot of help from the culling there. Looks for Wolfcamp, doesn't find it either. Blue buff back up, and Rymeister wants to steal another. Yep, that's the enemy blue buff, by the way. Absolute. Gonna lose that as Carter having a dance there with Snowstorm Siver in the mid lane. Rymeister gets the blue. Absolute falling further and further behind in this game. They have to do something proactive. It feels like they're being slow played by a really good late game comp. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, sounds great for Sin. Yeah, it sounds really promising for Sin. You know, Absolute, they have scaling as well. They've got the Nunu Jana combo to get on top of first mate, but he's just nowhere near where he should be at this stage of the game. Also, looks like he's going for a mid game centric build, so that's not going to help him out too much. And this Ezreal is just going to continue to shove in waves, be a sieging monster. And Rosie's going to continue to split push. Yep, I mean, Rosie, like you said, the next items that come through for the top and mid laner are integral here to the Sin lineup. I mean, Kodo doing well, building into his next ones, but... Yeah, I feel like this is how Rosie wanted to play support as well. If anyone's having a good game right now, Rosie's just like, I love creeps. He does. He really does. 196 CS. 22 and a half minutes is a good score there as well. Just AFK in the top lane hanging out. This is the dream of all top laners. Yeah, and well, you mentioned the score uh, time and already 260 creeps coming through from the Ezreal. Where is he? Wax him? I mean, Jack just can't do anything. He actually has tank items. He just doesn't feel that tanky right now. Yeah, exactly right. And wow. Oh, nailed it. Gets mid beast. Can he line up the Q? Ezreal as he comes in. Combo was good, but no bind to follow up. Trash Pro flashes. We'll miss that one, unfortunately. Card are going to zoom in, and Sin going really deep. They want the kill. Mid Beast will flash out, though. Gets himself to safety, but Malik's forced to flash out as well. Yeah, Nunubot does not want to be on that side of the map, and all of a sudden, the siege really starts now. No ultimate flash or heal for the mid laner. And again, just poking in. Ezreal, so good in these siege type situations. Wave clear, not bow. Oh my god! First mate gets evaporated. Yeah, we call him a poke champion assassin, maybe something we can yep, add. There's Juve dead as well. Malik channels his ulti for a second before it gets cancelled. Sin, four turrets to zero now. And Rosie's going to take a fifth right now in the top lane. Continue to peg away at that one. Although they might just rotate Baron. and take Baron. Yep, there's Rosie spotted by a ward, I believe. So there's actually a ward in the pit also. So this is not unknown by Absolute, but Rosie running interference on mid beast. He can't get anywhere near the pit. Yeah, exactly right. He's going to transform back. Why does the ulti do so much damage? This is close, though. Jack's trying it. They actually magical journey out. They get it. Ezreal smites it away. They'll take the journey out. Rosie, does he have a hop? He does. Rymaster gets out as well. A clean getaway. And only Trash Boat does. Yeah, so a Baron for one. Trash Boat plays the hero on Bard. Able to get everyone else out of the uh, thing. It was like... Street Fighter movie, Zangief yep. holding the door open. <laughs>
take my magical journey, friends. And that's what happened. Everyone else gets out. Trash Boat dies in the exchange. But Sing get out with a Baron. And Rymeister goes back, gets himself a death cap. And Boots 2. I don't oh. think he had Boots 2 as well. Did so I Boots think, 1? Yeah, he had brown bags okay. before he went back. So he grabbed a heck of a lot of items. Upgraded to nice new trainers. as Baron buff Rymeister level 16 as well. The Ezreal Ultimate wasn't doing enough damage. Yeah, we'll see whether he can eke some more out of it. And Sin just aren't leaving these lanes. To be perfectly honest, why would you? They're 8,000 gold ahead. Yeah, and absolute proof that their answer to that isn't forcing plays with the Shen ult because of how hard he's being split pushed on. It's just the fact that they're going to continue to try and farm out and get it to the point where items are irrelevant. But right now, that is a long way out of, I guess, their reach. And the Ezreal, 300 CS at 25 minutes, continuing to just farm. I feel like Rosie and Rymaster have literally not left their lanes all game. Yeah. Oh, Rosie won't leave his lane. As I said, if there is one player thinking this is a beautiful day for League of Legends now, it is Rosie. Well, Farron Buff going to work on the tower in the bottom. side. like Kadrid. Kind of 1v3 right now, but able to get that done. Rymeister going to chuck an ulti out just to move them off. Malik loses a whole host of health, and Kadrid's going to finish the tower. Yeah, they get Dragon at the same time, as we said. Rosie's still in top lane. Surprise, surprise. Yep, that tower's probably going to die soon as well. It looks like Jack might also join it. That's, yep, Jack. I mean, Frozen Mount's been finished here. Vectors Cal as well, just in case, as Rosie does get that turret. But Mininar at this stage for a Shen is just oppressive. Yeah, it certainly is, you know, and the fact that they've got that Wombo on his Meganar ultimate means that any damage he adds is just so good. Oh, Assassin Rymeister trying to line up the Arcane Shift again. We're going to throw in some poke instead, and we talked about all the teamfight potential for Sin. They're doing a smart oh, thing. They're just playing that was it a safe. Q. What the heck? Yep. Oh, mid -beast. He's dead. Moved out of the dash, so we'll go in again. Great ulti from Rymeister lines up the double. And then it's going to take the tower. Base is going to get broken soon. Jack does get onto Juice, but he McHales, gets McHales out. Sorry, by Vard. Trashboat doing a nice job there. Two kills and an inhibitor turret. Easy day in the office for Sin right now. Yeah, and you know Rymeister, he's not done. He wants to continue to try and pressure. 401 wants a couple more kills the game. Getting close to over, you have to think, as Sin launched themselves up to 13,000 gold ahead. And I think this was the Sin that a lot of teams were hoping for coming into the OPL. Very good laning phase coming through, good coordination on their team fights. Raw mechanics coming up absolutely massive in this game. Right, let's try it again. Oh my god. The damage. It's so much damage. I feel like Rymeister was also a blue buff forever in this game. Dang. These soul landers have been giving too much. This leash is uh, a little too long, I think. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, they were just able to sit in their comfort zone for so long. He's level 17. This is the first time he left mid lane. Yeah, actually, finally in the bottom lane. <laughs> Helping Rosie there. I mean, mid lane's done. He can push another lane yeah, at this exactly. point. But I feel like if there's anything you don't want to do, it's leave one of the better mid laners in mid lane for 17, until uh, level 17. Well, that's what's happened here. Rymeister still poking in. The ulti's back up. He's going to throw it. Oh, tried to juke them. Oh. Gets a bunch of minions, but he was trying for the four man. Certainly was trying to get it across everyone. And that was just Rosie and Rymeister holding them at bay. You see, the rest of the team got the shop in there. Phantom Dancer. <laughs> And the BF sort of finished up right now. Poor Cardred. Ooh, Magical Journey, bit awkward. They'll have to get out of that one. Good double binding though. Ooh, oh, Rosie comes in, he's got team. Megana. He wants it. How badly? Not that badly. Not that badly. There oh, he goes. Now they do really badly now. Goes in as he just eats a wall there. Midby's going to get destroyed. Oh no, he ulties, he's safe. Rosie. Stop me there, but Strawbella just getting destroyed. She'll be the first casualty. Drew's going to make mid beast the second. Seeing going to break another section of the base off. Yeah, so in the end, they do get the winning team fight. They're still going. Oh, Jack has to be careful. Get slowed by the Cosmic Binding. Not enough, though. Sin will back out for now. Yeah, Rai was oom there. Go back, spend how much gold? Probably an outright void stuff. He's Jesus. got 3,100. 4,000 gold in the lead that right now. That is absurd. That is absolutely absurd. 335 CS at 49 minutes. You said this was the sin that people wanted to show up in the OPL this split. This is the sin that Sing wanted to see show up. And Rymeister having the game of his split right where it counts. Yeah, exactly right. Able to come up huge on the AP as we will see. They've finished up a banner of command as well oh. on their Gragas just for another split pushing presence. Jack attack, gonna face check Rosie. 
Doesn't come recommended after the landing phase. Three levels down as well. Yeah, that was the best bluff there ever was, by the way, because if Rosie knew that was just a Shen, there would be no more I Shen. don't think you would be forward taunting. I don't think so. As Ryan Meister, oop, sees the Shen, he's like, well, gonna give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? As it turns out for Jack Attack, really bad stuff. Damage already done, as he just needs one more Mystic Shot and an E. Should be able to get it. The flash goes through, misses the Q, but he's still gonna chase it. Gets sped up by Barton. There's the kill. Yeah, so able to pick it up. Rosie still has teleport, so he can join the team whenever he wants. You see, he's already back in. They're looking to close this one out tutorial yeah, style. Baron up in a minute. I do not blame Sin for that, by the way. This is a big game for them. The worst thing they could do is throw an absolutely massive lead. Trash bird throws an absolutely massive butt off. Yep. Massive miss, unfortunately, though. They'll chase in, though, look to break the base, but might just force a team fight. Base broken in two places, make it three. If the top in hit's gonna be the last one to fall. And Sin, probably don't need the Baron that's spawning in 35 seconds. They're just gonna push in and close it yeah, out. Yeah, exactly right. And you see Absolute, they recognize that. Try and hit the go button. Malik taking too much damage, though. Juice interrupts the ultimate. Rymeister misses one. Rosie tries to scoop mid beast, but gets the double boulder toss instead. Rymeister, that's absurd. So much poke from this Ezreal. Yeah, he's just doing so much work. That'll be game. Sin able to secure fifth spot. The safety spot does belong to Sin. A very good last performance for them here in this split of the OPL. But after that, very good to have them back for next year. Yeah, it certainly was. You know, in the end, a convincing closeout. They played their game going into this. They picked a very good laning composition, made sure they controlled the early game, and from there, just continued to compile a lot of, I guess, gold. Yeah, great stuff there from Cinder. Break the time, finish fit for the safety, but let's close out the evening with Atlas and Rusty. Thank you very much, Pastry Time and Sin, securing their spot in next split of the OPL with a wonderful performance. Rymeister's just going completely off on that Ezreal. Yeah, congratulations to Sin. They secure that fifth place. They don't have to play in relegations. And if there's anything else you want to see from today, any of the stats from the split, as we have just played our last game, make sure you go over to that website, oc.lolesports.com. Yeah, make sure you go there. All of the amazing VODs, everything like that. But ladies and gentlemen, next week we are going to have the OCS. So find out which teams are going to be going into battle against Sudden Fear, Absolute, and of course Immunity as they try and hold on to their OPL dreams. Then the following week, the semi Final, the 20th and the 23rd of July. It is going to be absolutely gigantic as the Chiefs and Direwolves are going to try and battle their way through, of course, Avan and Legacy there as well. It's going to be gigantic. And then, of course, the 8th of August, the grand final of the OPL at Luna Park. You do not want to miss it. It is going to be absolutely gigantic. But on behalf of myself, Rusty, Pastry Time Spawn, and our whole production team, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you not next week, but the week after.